The Falkville Metal Man, also known as the Alabama Metal Man, is believed to be an extraterrestrial that was caught running through a field in Falkville, Alabama. The city's chief of police was out investigating a UFO sighting when he saw the creature wrapped in some odd metallic material standing in a field. The chief quickly took pictures of it and the being then began to run at inhuman speed. Chief returned to his truck and sped after the metal man, only going about 35 miles due to the terrain, but the ent entity left his truck in the dust. Luckily, I got in contact with the sheriff who had experienced this. His name is Jeffrey Greenhall, and what he experienced is a very strange counter. Now am I saying this is real? I can't be 100% sure, but do I believe the man? Yes, I do. Strange things happen in our world. Some are very hard to believe. And something so odd like this, almost costumey looking in nature, can be very easy to dismiss. But when looking at the facts, the way this man has progressed through his life, you will see that throughout this interview, he's telling the truth. How are you doing today? Um, I'm having my good days and I have my bad days. I've had a lot of health problems here in the past few years that uh you know has took its toll on me but basically i'm you know i'm making it yeah absolutely i understand that now with the uh, covid that's pretty troubling times around so yeah I've, I've stayed pretty well isolated for the past well since uh february the 23rd of uh this year uh my primary care doctor told me that it would could be devastating to me because of the underlying health conditions so i have stayed isolated absolutely i understand that all right well um is it all right if i just ask you a few questions about your experience uh probably should only take a couple minutes that uh you are being recorded right now just so i can uh if, if with your permission post this on youtube for my uh, film account um I was going to make a small little kind of almost documentary about this because uh, this case is pretty uh, underground. And uh, as in terms of, uh, you know, uh, popularity, I kind of wanted to uh, get this spread out because this was a pretty interesting uh, encounter you had here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I pretty well withdrew myself from the uh, public for years. And the other phone, other phone number that you contacted me through is my is my wife and phone, and she is kind of a protector. She helps me filter the uh, peop the bad people, and I call them out of in this world. And you know, I didn't right. realize that we had so many people that would, you know, uh, uh, they. I don't know. They get they they get their uh, kicks with uh, uh, mistreating other people because of they've you know misfortunes that they've had, and she helps me to make sure that that uh, you know that I just don't have to go through a lot of the stuff. Right. Absolutely, I understand that. Because uh, something like this, it's it's very uh, very strange, and you know, I know a lot of people are probably very uh, they're probably very very uh, what's the word uh, very uh, not they don't it's it's a hard subject to believe, but I uh, you know I'm completely open to the subject. I uh, I personally I absolutely believe what happened to you, and I'm I'm very sorry for the times you went through because of what happened. Because what I've read on the internet it sounds like. You went through quite a bad phase from that town. Well, not only that town, but, you know, the people that were supposed to be your friends or my friends, you know, the only thing that I found out is that I couldn't trust anyone. Right. And I withdrew. I, I ran. I went places, you know, to get away from it. And, you know, sometimes it was no, there's no hiding I moved to a uh, county about uh, 30 miles from where this happened, and uh, uh, I bought a place in a remote area to where that uh, 
you know, my closest neighbor was like a mile away. So, I mean, I don't, didn't want to be bothered. Right. And, uh, I raised, uh, help, well, me and my wife raised five children. Three of them were adopted children and two of them was my biological children. And, uh, you know, I, I turned out to be a person that I never dreamed that I would be right. because of what happened. Yeah. I, it made me hard, but it made me strong as well. And I came close to, uh, you know, losing my sanity, but my wife and God kept me from losing my sanity. Right. And, you know, that's the only thing that, that kept me going. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, finally I accepted the fact that I can change some things, but there's a lot of things that I can't change. Yeah. Biggest thing is I can change is me. Right. So, and you know, I, I went, I went to uh, different meetings to, and, uh, I had learned through my experience what they were teaching. Right. And I said, well, I'll be darn, you know, I picked this up on my own. Then didn't nobody have to tell me to, about it. Right. And so, you know, I, I went through, I went through some very hard times. And like I say, I ran from it. I moved to different states and it just didn't help. It didn't work. I came back. I came home. Right. I understand that. You know, I haven't had anything like that happen, but I understand uh, seeing something like that can really change you forever. Now, if oh, it you... did me. I used to be a, uh, a very understanding, caring person. I went to church every time the church doors were open, and, and it changed my life entirely. Right. I still am a believer in a life after death and i believe all and at one point i didn't think that there was you know uh, any other life source in the universe but that has really changed yeah i understand that um now if you don't mind i'm just going to ask you a few uh, questions about exactly what happened that night if it's not too sensitive for you um well some things, you know, some things I probably wouldn't, you know, don't want to answer. I won't, wouldn't like to answer. Right. But, uh, I mean, there's a few things that I, that I can't, will share. Alrighty. Um, just a quick question. How long were you a, a police chief in that town of uh, Falkville, if I'm saying that right? I was hired in in January of 1973, and this all come about come down in uh, October the 17th in right. uh, uh, 1973. 1973. And uh, then, of course, I. I I had so many things going on that I, it was somewhere around the 1st of November. I resigned and I left. I, I got a, as far away as I possibly could get. Right. I did, I did read some of that online. They, they discussed in an article of, uh, that you had left the station. Um, the next question, um, exactly, uh, when you, if this isn't too, you don't got to answer this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask you, but you, again, you don't got to answer it. But when you had first saw this object in the road, what was your initial thought that what, what it was possibly a person? Absolutely. Yeah. I said, this is an idiot. Right. And so, I mean, after that, you know, it, it, things just started acting was so strange it was not I mean, this wasn't real it wasn't really happening but it was happening to me yeah why me right you know I, I, but my initial thoughts was yes it was a person pulling a prank right and uh about could you say roughly how tall the the uh the uh metal man was 
I would say probably about my height, and I'm six foot. Okay, so he was a he was a size of a regular man. Yeah, maybe a little bigger. Oh, okay, all right. Um, and as the material, it looked reflect. I've seen the photos you took on that camera. The the material looked pretty reflective. Um, it almost looked like a foil of a kind. Did it when you saw that in person? Again, if you don't mind me asking, what would you best describe the material to be? At first, I had no idea what it was. It, I mean, my initial thoughts was maybe aluminum foil. Right. But, you know, uh, there was no pieces there around there after it was all over. So I, I, I just, no, I don't, I don't. I don't know what I don't know what to believe at that point. Right, um, and it, you said it it kind of moved, uh, not not human at all in the way it kind of moved like a, a, a. I'm guessing it had very structured movements. Right. So. Like like a uh, steel joint. Okay, so no bending of the arms or legs. It was more of just a. No. No. I mean, whenever I, whenever I think about it, is uh, when I was a child, I used to watch a movie, Lost in Space. Oh yeah. And uh, it's, you know, the robot that was uh, on the movie. It kind of re- reminded me of it some to some extent. Of course, there were no rubbery arms or nothing like that. Right. And um, as in terms of uh, the the feet and the hands, you may have not even processed that or gotten a good look at it. But did it look like it had any like uh, fingers or just? I mean, from the photos, it looks like it had some sort of uh, I don't know, like apparatuses on the end of the arms, and it almost looks like it's wearing some sort of boot or I I, I can't really tell. But I was just yeah, wondering something if, similar to mittens, right? You know. Yeah. It's not not like that. There was ha- a hand, or or you know, some or maybe some sort of a glove. I don't. I have no idea. I mean, I did. I never. I, I didn't get that close. Right. Um, and what kind of camera did you did you take that uh those photos on? I, I is it a Polaroid? Did is that what it was? A Polaroid yeah. camera? Yeah. Yeah. I think what they called, I think it was a, a, a Polaroid 2. Oh, okay, yeah. That's, that's an old one. Uh, yeah, we got to where that we started carrying cameras with us because, you know, when, you, when we apprehended people, we'd always take a mug shot. Right. Um, another question, did I... Uh, did, you, did you say anything to it or uh, yell anything at it before you had... Uh, taking a photo. Yeah, I, uh, I said, I said something to the fact, "Howdy, stranger." Right. And uh, there was no response at all, and you know, I thought it. Uh, I didn't push my luck. At that point, I reached in and I, uh, uh, turned the. Uh, blue lights on on the patrol car and seeing how reflective the uh, material really was and then that when I look back up the, it was moving away from me and so I said well I'll just chase it down and run, or if I have to run over it and, and, and that didn't happen either right um can you describe how it turned and and I've I've read online it kind of almost hopped or like sprinted away. Well, I mean, yeah, it was. I mean, it. I didn't see the actual turn right. because I was I had been over putting my camera back in the car and, and laying the photos on the console and the. Uh, uh, at that point, I had taken all four of the photos that I took, and 
it was kind of a, like it was a Um, almost like away, but I, 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 it, it didn't, it wasn't moving like I would move. Yeah, almost like, person. like skipping or or something like that, kind of throwing its legs out. Right. Yeah. Right. Like it was uh, uh, had springs on its feet or something. Right. It's very strange. Um. So. Uh, I've read that there was an antenna on top of the head of it. it do, is that true? Was there a, some sort of object? No, I didn't. I never seen that until I looked at the photos real close. Right, that there was an object on the top of its head. Right. There was. I mean, it was like some kind of a helmet of some sort. Right. And on top of it, there was a... Uh, like a remote control antenna or something. Right. And there was no face on the on the helmet either. It was just kind of just a material. Nothing that I could make out. Right, yeah. And and uh but the funny thing about it is is sometime later that there was a woman came forth, uh when there were some people investigating it and told that she was the one that made that phone call to me that night. Yeah, about the landing? I couldn't, I couldn't, don't remember what her name is, but she came forth and told uh, some people that were uh, uh, investigating it, a guy by the name of Roy Crossfield, from California, he he had came to investigate it, and and she came forth and told him about it, and then ten years, nearly to the day, I took those pictures. Some somebody or something broke into my home, and those pictures disappeared, and I. You know, wow, the actual. I, I don't. I, I don't have them anymore. Right. I didn't, I didn't have a backup or anything, and they were in a safe place, but they came up missing. Wow. So, uh, wow, that's a, that's crazy. Yeah, near and that and what is so, so unbelievable? It is was nearly ten years to the day that it happened. Wow. So probably around eighty three then. Yes, it was in 1983. Matter of fact, I filed a police report in uh, uh, November, right around November the 1st of uh, 1983. uh, Someone had broke into my house and stole some stuff. Wow. So did they steal anything besides those photographs? Or... Yes, there was there was uh, there was a uh, uh, two firearms that was missing. Oh, My Lord. service revolver. Out of all the guns that I had, my service revolver was missing, and a shotgun. Wow! And that's that's all that was missing from my home, and those pictures, and those pictures were in a. Uh, They were in a place that didn't nobody know where they were at but me. Yeah, that's very strange. When was the last time that you've actually... Now, the photos are online. I'm not sure. You may know that. Those photos that you took, they are on the digital internet. I've seen the negatives, too. When was the last time you've actually seen the 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 photo on? Have you? I mean, have has it been since that time since you saw not the physical photo, but just looked at the picture what you saw? It's been. I mean, I've I pulled. I take. I got took them out uh, frequently and looked at them for the ten years that I had them, and then uh, after. Uh, Someone broke in my house, and my service revolver was missing. And then I went to get, uh, I mean, one day I would check, just, you know, take a look at the pictures and discovered that they were gone. And I said, wow, that's really weird. 
the only three things that I had with me that night, the shotgun that was in the car, the service revolver, and those pictures. Wow. And all three of them came up missing. Wow, that is that is insane. I believe you, though. I have no doubt that actually happened, and I have no doubt that any. I, I believe all. I believe everything you said. So, you know, if you know, I'm I'm young. I'm only eighteen. But if you know, if I was in that time, I would have been one of your advocates to say, hey, you know, I know all these people are raised this way, and they believe certain things. But there's a lot of stuff out there we don't know about. So right, and I believe that too. Matter of fact, I've had some very strange communications with, I don't know what you, what you call it, nature or the world or the universe. I've had some very strange things. And I've also lived through three events that I should have died from. And I've had the doctor to tell me, you should not be alive. Right. Wow. Is there, would you, do you want to, uh, further any of the, that talk on those, uh, strange events or uh, if you, would you rather just keep that to yourself? Well, see, in, uh, 25 years ago, I came down with a cancer. Right. And said that I had had the cancer with like 18 years and it was two uh, enormous tumors and I survived all that. Then the heart condition, they told me that my heart was doing some things that they had rarely ever seen before and they finally got it fixed by putting, uh, they didn't have to do uh, heart surgery, but they did have to go in and dilate some uh, arteries and put a pacemaker in. And then I had a uh, a triple aneurysm that they had to do surgery on two of them at the same time. And on each one of those things, I should have never survived. But but you 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 lived. Well. Like I say, I have had some strange happenings in the past 50 years since this has happened to me. Right. That I've is... had some things happen to me that people would think, if I told them, they would think I was crazy, that I had lost my mind. Yeah. And I haven't lost my mind. It's just some strange things that has really happened. Yeah. It's all about the perception. Because we do live in a world with many things we do not know. So it's hard for others to perceive when something so strange happens to you. I understand that. But I'm sorry for those troubling times that you had to go through for such an event. But some, you know, possibly it's destiny. Possibly it's, you know, it's just what was meant to happen through your, your timeline. Yeah, I mean, I've wondered many a times, why me, why me? But, you know, that's a, I've, I've kind of got, had these, this uh, voice that tells me all things happen for a reason. Right. You know, and I, I firmly I believe that. I believe that, too, that things happen for a reason. And there's something, I don't know what it is, but just like whenever I, be, I became a workaholic. And uh, after I had cancer, then the, I had so many things that happened due to the cancer and a year of chemo ther- chemotherapy that... Uh, I couldn't work anymore. And I was wondering why did this happen to me? Well, I raised three grandchildren for nine years. I found out why that I didn't, you know, why I was left here. Raised my, raised these grandchildren. 
and now I've had two more grandchildren for five years. Right. So I've been raising children. Yeah. I, I didn't become a person of hatred like a lot of people thought that I would that I would be, but I I don't trust a lot of people. Yeah, I understand that. You know, the 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 fact is is that you've succeeded, uh, even though you've been through those times. You, you, you've you've stepped up, and you have been the better person. And when people are, you know, they're criticizing you, it, they their voice doesn't matter because you know what's true, you know what's real. Right, and and it, and there there was times in my life that I did consider hurting some people, but then I decided better. Right. They'll get theirs in the end because I'm a firmly believe if you do something to someone that it's going to come back to you more than what they. Right. You done to them. Yeah, absolutely. So they'll get theirs in the end. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's true. It's karma. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, one other question, not to change top chop topics too rapidly, but um, you said a woman had called about uh, uh, something. Was it a sighting, or did she really say something had landed in on her property? Yes, she said that there. She owns property close, very close to some TVA power lines, and that there had been some strange uh, objects. Uh, unidentified flying objects around those TVA lines. And she said that night that there was uh, a lot of uh, traffic in the air under and around those TVA power lines. Oh, wow. Okay. That's very interesting. So maybe they were interested in whatever those uh, mechanical power lines were. Right. Right. And... No, I, I even went to, I even went out there to where she was talking about, and sure enough, you know, there, there was, uh, I seen some strange things happen at those power lines, too. Wow. Like light, like lights in the sky or something actually? I, on I seen, I seen fireballs go to the ground from those power lines. Oh, wow, that is very strange. And I said, hey, I'm not supposed to be seeing this. Right. I don't know what's happening or why, so I left. Yeah, and was that the was that just around the time, or was that that night that you saw? No, that was a few, few nights later. Uh, a few nights later. That's very strange. Yeah. That is very, very strange. Um, well... I think I've asked you all the questions I need to ask. Um, something I probably should tell you is that uh, I am a short filmmaker, so I do I do small films. I actually do some westerns, but um, I was thinking about making a short film um, in somebody playing you when you were a, a sheriff back in the seventies. Now this this is your incident. This is your encounter. This is your life. So if you have anything against that. You know, absolutely, I will not make the the film. But you know, I just think that something like this, so interesting, and you were treated so unfairly that this needs to get out, and you know, this interview needs to get out there. Yeah, well, it it doesn't matter to me anymore. You know, I'm I'm uh, uh, over seventy years old now, and I'm not going to say what else could happen to me because there is some things that can happen. But, no, it doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, once I get this posted on YouTube, I will send you the link to the number I've called. Is this the number I, I should reach you at? Okay, this phone that I have, this is my this is my personal phone, so you could call me at it or get in touch with me okay. whenever you want. All right. Well, I will make sure to send you the link to the video so that if you wanted to watch it or go over it, I will be putting the photos that of the uh, the metal 
metal man in the uh, video so if I, i'm not sure if you wanted to look at that or not because i know that's very uh very sensitive to you yeah well i mean i've i've learned to live with it i haven't seen the photos now in nearly 40 years because they were wow you know, taken from me so right uh, you, but I mean, you do know they are they are on the internet, right? They, they the photo, the negative, like the actual photos you took, or you you can find them on the internet. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've been told by several people, but I don't. I haven't went out of my way to look them up. Right. Yeah, I understand that because that would be a quite quite a sight for something you haven't seen in so long. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of like. Let a, let a sleeping dog lie. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Well, I wanted to, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview, and the, I really appreciate your time. And I'm I'm very sorry for how events unfolded in your life, but you know, I do believe what happened to you is 100 percent the truth. I don't see any reason for you know a, a false or a fake story because the way your life has gone about, you know, there's a lot of authenticity to all this. Yeah, well, at first, you know, my life fell apart, and my, and just everything completely fell apart, and I went back to the bare earth with nothing but my clothes, and thank goodness now, I'm not rich, Yeah. but I live a comfortable life. Right, I understand that. Well, I, I really do appreciate your time, and I'll, I'll stay in contact with you, and uh, I'll send you the, uh, I'll make sure to send you the video link if you ever want to watch it. All right. Um, but, uh, I, again, I really, I really do appreciate your time. Well, I appreciate you yeah. uh, understanding the things that have happened. Absolutely. You know, there's... There's a lot of, lot of, you know, like you said, bad people, skeptics, you know, that's, that's life. People, people, they really don't understand. They don't, they don't process it. And when it's so serious to you, it's very frustrating. So I understand that. Yeah, well, I, like I say, I, I learned to get over it, you know. I mean, I don't hate because of it, but I'm a different person. Right, right. I know the people now that I can associate with and the ones that I need to leave alone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for your time. Yes, sir. All right. You have a good night. Thank you, and you too. Bye.